Hello everybody and welcome to this month's vlogcast. I'm here in Galway for the Irish National Patient Day, uh, which has been a very exciting project. And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Claire Andrews from St. Vincent's Hospital in Dublin. Correct. Claire, thank you very much for taking part in this patient. Well, I'm day. absolutely delighted to be here. You know, I'm only a new lead, I, I'm a new consultant, so it's fantastic to have support of MPN Voice. So thank you very much. And do you have a big cohort of MPN patients in Dublin? We do. We have a large cohort. Um, so when I started, I started about two years ago, so I inherited a service. So firstly, I have a collection of patients who've been diagnosed for, you know, probably over 20 years. And because I have an interest in MPN as well, I have I now get the majority of the newly diagnosed MPN. So I have a lovely mix of old and new, so older patients, younger patients. Um, and obviously, you know, with, with younger patients and older patients, there's very different needs. So it does give me a nice mix, which is fantastic. And where do you see the future of MPN treatments in, in, in Dublin? In Dublin, in Ireland. in Ireland. Yeah, so MPN has come along a huge way, you know, with our understanding of the biology of MPN, specifically since the Jack 2 back in 2005. It's really given us, um, you know, even besides the pharmacology side of things, really about the symptoms of it, you know. So now in Ireland and in Dublin, for example, we have a lot of A&P or adverse, uh, advanced nurse practitioners who are focusing on MPNs and really focusing on the symptoms and listening to patients. And I think that's something that's really improved in the last 20 years. From the pharmacology side of things, you know, in terms of ET and PV, not a huge amount of change. PV, for example, we can use the JAK inhibitors. With myelofibrosis now in Ireland, we have the access of both ruxolitinib and fedratinib. They're two JAK inhibitors that, uh, that are given for patients who are symptomatic, so that's really excellent. And hopefully over the next few years, we'll have momolitinib and procretinib. And really for patients, it's about choice. You know, it's about seeing a patient because every patient has different requirements, different blood counts. So having choice is really the key. I suppose the other thing in terms of um, MPNs is that we have better diagnostics now in Ireland. Um, we used to be sending over the, the mutational profile or the next generation sequencing over to the UK. We're now doing that in St. James's. So once again, we've got better diagnostics. We do, I suppose, one of the gaps perhaps we have a little bit in Ireland is the clinical trials. We have one clinical trial open in myelofibrosis, um, and that's lispatrocept um, used for patients who have low haemoglobin. And we also have the mosaic, uh, which is more of a, a, of a why we have MPM. Um, so that's something as a group that we are trying to work at. But I think, you know, with the combination of um, AMPs, with the combination of clinical trials, access to drugs, all of these, I think, will hopefully improve the quality of life for our patients with MPN. That is amazing. And yeah. tell me, do you have nurse-led groups or do you...? There, in Ireland, we definitely have nurse-led groups. I don't have, we don't have it yet in St. Vincent's, mm -hmm. but certainly over the next year, it's something that we are hoping to start. Um, and yesterday, for example, you had the fantastic uh, nurse uh, education group, but there is definitely, um, so uh, uh, within our consultant MPN patients who are uh, consultants that are interested in MPN, we have set up a group and where the AMPs are now going to join that group as well. So all of that helps us to sort of uh, improve the lives for the patients. Well, the future seems very bright, and for that, and also thank you for taking part in Absolutely today. Absolutely no problem. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. much.